So you want to know how to make a Minecraft server. Well, in this video, we're going to show you exactly how to do that, going over everything. But I do want to mention that the server that we're making in this video is only up and running while your computer is up and running. It also uses your own computer's resources, meaning you're going to need a decently high-end computer as well as a really, really good internet connection in order to run this server as it's using your own internet as well. Because of that, you also need to make sure it's only for your friends, your family, people that you trust, because anyone who joins this server can DDoS you which basically just means hit your internet offline as well as figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates. On top of all that it's nice to have a little bit of tech experience and be somewhat tech savvy in order to run a server on your own computer and basically self-host a server. Um, it's not required we're gonna go over everything as basically in-depth as we can but it is still hosting a server on your computer and it can be a little techy at times. With that being said, what if you want a server that's up 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? You don't have to worry about the hardware because it's not hosted on your own computer. What if you want a server that you can easily add mods, mod packs, plugins to? And what if you don't want to have to worry about any of the security of the server or anything like that? Well, that's where our company, Simple Game Hosting, comes in. Go to the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash simple to start your very own 24-hour DDoS-protected Minecraft server with our company at Simple Game Hosting. You can easily add mods, plugins, or mods. Mod packs with our one click mod pack installer. Should you have any issues with your server, there's an incredible live chat support team to help you out. On top of the fact, there's a high quality knowledge base as well. You can do anything you want at Simple Game Hosting that you can do with any other Minecraft server. But the goal at Simple Game Hosting is to make things as simple and easy as possible. So go check out Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below. The breakdown .xyz simple to start your very own Minecraft server for you and your friends. But what if you don't want to host a server with simple game hosting well let's go ahead and go through every single step of making a minecraft server yourself first things first you want to go here this is the second link in the description down below and this is our in-depth text guide on getting a server the goal with the video you're watching now is that it lasts for a very, very long time and is up to date for a very, very long time with making a Minecraft server. Unfortunately, the only way that I can guarantee that is via this article because for the next update, they could completely change how you make a server. So this video up here and this article will always be up to date and perfectly working. I hope that this video works for a very, very long time and it should, but if for whatever reason it does change, this is here to help you out. Nevertheless, once you're here, go ahead and scroll down and click on this download button. That will take you to Minecraft's official server download page on Minecraft.net. Once you're here, go ahead and click on this link, Minecraft underscore server, and then the version will change. Right now, the most recent version is 1.20.2. It will be whatever the most recent version is when you're watching this video. When you click on that, the download will begin, and you may need to keep or save the file depending on your browser. It's 100% safe to do that, though, because this is Minecraft.net, where you're downloading this, the official Minecraft website. And let's, let's go ahead and minimize our browser and move this file to our desktop. Now for me, it's going to be in my downloads folder, but for you, it might be in another location. Wherever it's at, go ahead and go there and then move it to your desktop. Now one thing that you may have noticed here is that mine says .jar at the end. Yours may say server and doesn't have .jar. In order to fix that, in the file explorer here, you can get here by clicking in the top left for me, but also just coming in here and searching for the file explorer. What you want to do is click on view up here at the top. Then you want to make sure file name extensions is checked. As you can see, I unchecked that and now mine just says server. I want it to say .jar though because it helps us later on. So we want to make sure that .jar is shown there and that's by clicking view and making sure this file name extensions box is checked. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and now create a new folder on our desktop. So right click new folder. You can name this whatever you want. I'm just going to name it Minecraft server because that's what we're starting here, a Minecraft server. Then drag and drop this server.jar into the Minecraft server folder. Open up the folder, and now all you need to do to start your server is double click this server.jar. But a lot of you will do that, and it won't work. This right here won't work. You won't get these files. And that's because we need to download Java 17. Java 17 is required for Minecraft servers, and this is an in depth guide in the description on how to get it. It covers everything super in depth. There's a video, there's a text guide, but you still may not be done. You might get Java 17 and still not be able to double click on that server.jar. Well, guess what? Jarfix will fix that. It will take all the jar files and link them to Java, making them work together and allowing you to use that double click that I was just talking about. 
So now we can go ahead and minimize our browser. And what we want to do is double click on that server.jar after we've gotten Java in the jar fix, if we couldn't double click on it before. Now we have this new eula.txt file, eula.txt. Open that up with notepad right like so. And then assuming you agree to the Minecraft eula, which we do, change this eula equals false here to eula equals false true t-r-u-e exactly like that with no other spaces or anything eula equals true file save to save the eula file here and now what we want to do is go ahead and close the eula file and we can start our server so we can double click on the server.jar and the server is going to start now you might be like wait there was a lot of hype at the beginning of this video that that would be difficult. And I agree, there was. But the hard part's actually not getting to this point, getting the server live. The hard part is allowing your friends to join via port forwarding. So let's go ahead and let the server get live and I'll show you how you can join your server. Right now, you're the only person who can join your server, but it's important to test it at this point, I feel, just to make sure everything's working, to see if your computer is good enough to be able to handle even like you playing Minecraft and being on the server. It's a good time to test that before we go through the whole entire port forwarding setup where it's gonna take a while and all that stuff and go through the really in-depth, complicated stuff of hosting a server. So I'm gonna go ahead, open up Minecraft, and then once you do the same and your server is running like this in the background here, we can go ahead and join this server. But again, you're the only person that can join at this exact moment. So here we go, Minecraft is open, the server is running. If we click on multiplayer here, we can go ahead and add a new server. So just click add server here, and I'm gonna name this our local connection because we're the only people who can join this because we're on the same computer the server is hosted on, right? So it's the local connection of this computer. What do we use for the server address? Local host, right? So local host, all one word, exactly like this, is what the IP address for this server is. And again, you're the only person who can join this way. Click done, and now we have this new local connection here. And if we double click on it, we'll see us pop in on the left-hand side, right like so. We are now on this server. And like I said, it's a good time to run around, make sure your server can, ha or your computer, excuse me, can handle it. You're not getting a bunch of lag and stuff like that. And if you are, it might be time to consider using a host because that means it's probably going to lag even more when your friends join. Actually, it is going to lag even more when your friends join. The more players you have on your server, the more RAM, the more resources, the more CPU of your computer it is going to take. But nevertheless, here we are. We know it's working and we're not seeing anything like can't keep up or anything like that here, meaning it's working perfectly. So let's go ahead and stop our server. I'm also going to disconnect and close out of Minecraft. But let's come over here and stop our server. Always type stop right here in this text box and hit enter to stop the server and shut it down properly, making sure everything saves. Now, we can then go ahead and close out of this server directory here, this server folder. And what we want to do is open up command prompt. So come over here and type in CMD and you'll have command prompt here. Open this up and then in command prompt, what you want to do is type IP CONFIG, IP config all one word exactly like that and hit enter. That's gonna give us a bunch of information here. Specifically though, what we want is the IPv4 address and the default gateway. Both of those are right here, IPv4 and default gateway. We need to make a note of these and I'm gonna be using Notepad for that, but you can use absolutely any sort of note-taking format that you want. I'm gonna use Notepad, but you can use a sticky note. It doesn't matter. And then what we wanna do is type IPv4 here and copy this IPv4 address over. For me, that's 192.168.1.3. Three. For you, it may be completely different, and that's perfectly normal. That's why I'm showing you how to find yours instead of just saying this is what it will be. For the default gateway, there is something that I need to note. Now, for us, we just have a default gateway that is only numbers. You may have one, though, that is numbers and letters. If that's the case, what you'll want to do is go with the one that's just numbers that's actually under this. So you would have a big, long string for your default gateway here that's numbers and letters and has colons in it. And then under that, you'll have the normal default gateway here. And that is what you want to go ahead and use. So we're going to get this default gateway that looks exactly like mine, or not exactly like mine, but is in the same format. And in my case is 192.168.1.1. Yours could be different, different numbers, but it's going to be in that same sort of format with three dots or periods, if you will, in the center of it here. 
Now we want to go ahead and close out a command prompt because we have the numbers that we want in order to port forward. How do we port forward? Well, we want to go ahead and open up our browser. And then in our browser, we want to open a brand new tab exactly like that. Then up here at the top where we would normally type in simplegamehosting.com, thebreakdown.xyz, or youtube.com up here in the address bar. We want to type in 192.168.1.1. Exactly like that and hit enter. That's going to open up some sort of login box. Your login box probably looks different from mine. Mine just kind of pops in from the top. Yours may be a pop-up window. Yours may be in a nice GUI sort of GUI format that's really good, well-designed in comparison to this one. But you need to enter in your router's username and password here. And that's going to be different than your Wi-Fi password. Luckily, we have a guide in the description on how to find your router's username and password. And this covers everything. Start with method one, work your way all the way down through method five, and then and eventually you will get into your router. Generally people find it and get in, into their router by method four and don't have to contact their ISP. I'm gonna go ahead and log into my router. Then once we're logged in, we can go ahead and port forward. All right, so we are now logged into my router. Yours probably looks completely different and that is okay. I'm gonna be giving you some of the common terms that you can expect to look for when port forwarding. And of course, we have an in-depth guide on port forwarding as well that goes over how to port forward on uh, the top routers out there today from Netgear and Asus to uh, LinkedIn and Cisco and AT&T and all of those. It's all covered there. And even if your specific router isn't in that video, go check it out because a lot of routers are very similar, right? So you'll see that Cisco might be similar to Verizon, which is similar to AT&T. So go through there, watch that video, because even if your specific router is not mentioned, you'll pick up a lot of good terms that'll help you out when port forwarding. I'm also gonna give you some terms here as well though. So for me, port forwarding is in advanced, and then it is in advanced again, and then it is in port forwarding slash port triggering. Now for you, it may be in single port forwarding, it may be in port forwarding slash port triggering, it could be in apps and gaming, it could be in NAT gaming, NAT gaming, it could be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding, it could be in game forwarding, it could be in your security tab, it could be in a firewall tab, it could be in a security and firewall tab, and it could be kind of a combination of any of these things. Overall, don't be afraid to click around on your router. It's pretty hard to break stuff because usually you get a prompt before anything saves and the only thing you need to save is your port forward. So as long as you're not saving anything that's not that, you're good to go. And if you do have any issues, it's super easy to reset a router to default factory settings. Usually there's just a little button you can press on the back of the router. So anyway, once you've done that, once you've found port forwarding, how do we port forward? Let's go ahead and click add a custom service here to get started. You may need to plus to add a new port forward. You may need to create a port forward. There might just be a plus button. Who knows what it is on your router? Sometimes you'll just have a big list of empty boxes in the port forwarding section. And if that's the case, go with the first one. But for me, I had to add a custom service or add a port forward. Now for the service name or ID, what's this port forward for? That's all we're doing. And this is for a Minecraft server. It's just so you can identify what it is. Then for protocol, we want to do TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. We want to make sure that both of these are selected in some way. In the case of you not being able to do both, which isn't as common today, but just in case you can't, you want to make sure that you do this twice, once for TCP and once for UDP. Everything else will stay the same, except maybe the ID may need to change to whichever protocol you're using. But for me, I can select TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, and we're good. You may literally have the word both, by the way, and you would just click that if you have it. Now, for the port, anything involving port, external port, internal port, outside port, inside port, public port, private port, it does not matter. Anything involving the word port, we're going to enter in 25565. 25565. So external port. Hey, Nick said if there's the word port, we're going to enter in 25565, which is what we've done here. Next up, we have internal port. Oh, there's that word port again. We're going to enter in 25565 there as well. Now for the internal or local IP address, depending on what your router calls it, we're going to be entering in that IPv4 address that we got earlier. So for us, that's going to be 192.168.1.3. Now for you, you may have a drop down list of all of the devices connected to your network. And I've actually got that as well here and I can select my computer, right here it is, the IP address 192.168.1.3, that's what we want, right? Either way I can do it, 
but you may just have that list and if that's the case just select the computer you're starting the server on now 99% of you are done with your port forward at this point you can click apply but some of you a few of you will need your public IP address for the port forward luckily everyone who's watching this video yes you you everybody needs their public IP address because that's how your friends are gonna join this server so let's go get it there's a link in the description down below to here and this is our website where we're just taking your public IP address and giving it back to you but you can see why it's important you keep this as private as possible you can get your region your city your latitude and longitude coordinates off of the public IP address so you want to make sure that it's as private as you possibly can that's why you can only see four three here for me you can only see the last two digits the rest of it are covered up that way you can't get my public IP and figure out this information so let's go ahead and click to copy it now for those of you who needed this for your port forward come back over here paste it in and then make sure you save your port forward you would have had a public IP or an outside IP address but for those that didn't, you now have it. And let's go ahead and get back into Minecraft. So we can minimize our browser. I'm going to minimize this as well. And we want to start our server. To do that, double click on the server.jar here. That's going to fire up the, uh, the server kind of GUI that we had that we were managing the server with earlier. Right here it is. We also want to go ahead and launch up Minecraft. So I will do that and meet you in game with the server started. All right, so the server is started, Minecraft is open, and if we now go to multiplayer, we can go ahead and add a server. Now this time we're not gonna call it local connection, we're gonna call it our public IP, because this is how we're joining. Then you wanna paste in the public IP here. Again, you can only see 4.3, but that does confirm it's the same one we used earlier, so it's good noting that, and then just click done. And now we have two servers. These are the exact same server. One is using your local connection, one's using your public IP. Go ahead and double click on the public IP one and it will join right on into the server, unless it doesn't. And in some cases, you won't be able to join your server via the public IP. That's because your ISP, your internet service provider, they just won't allow it. Whereas your friends will be able to join in via the public IP. That's because when you're joining via your public IP, you're connecting back to yourself. Some internet service providers, they just straight up block that and won't allow it to happen. So as long as you can join via the local host connection we did earlier and your friends can join via the public IP, you're good to go. Otherwise, if you do have any issues with your friends joining, it's probably due to an issue with the port forward or a firewall blocking it. Now, most commonly, that's going to be Windows Defender Firewall, which there's a complete guide on how to allow people through Windows Defender Firewall through your server by allowing Java through it. So this covers everything you need to know. It has helped over 300,000 people get that set up. And then we also have some other guides, which is how to add more RAM to your server and how to fix a broken Minecraft server. Both of these are helpful depending on what you're looking for. If you have something broken on your server, this will help you out. And if you want to add more RAM, this will help you do that as well. That is in the description linked down below. But nevertheless, that is how you can make a Minecraft server. Let us know if you have any questions in the comment section down below. The goal of this video was for it to be as comprehensive as possible when it comes to hosting a server. So I hope it did accomplish that. And maybe if you've not been able to host a server yourself in the past, you were able to with this video. But if you do have any issues, we are here to help. And be sure to check out Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below. The breakdown that XYZ slash simple to stop worrying about hosting it yourself and host it the simple way where you can easily add the mods, the plugins, and all those other awesome customizations to your server. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comments and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.